You know, so often I think these days that we start to hear of some different areas that can be very exciting in the process of medicine and healing and so forth. And one of those areas that seems to have come up very strongly is this concept of the quantum energy. And we've heard a lot of people talk about that. And the fact that as people are able to tap into that, that they are experiencing healings of different of different types. And, you know, as I as I consider that, it's like, wow, how do you how do you take that and really help it to be effective in someone's life? And I'm really excited today to be able to interview a gentleman by the name of Tom Palladino. And he has developed a machine that taps into that quantum energy and is able to literally, through what he does, help people to experience a better life, a healthier life, uh, a better emotional life. So I hope you'll join us today. I think you're going to find it very fascinating. Come with an open mind because it's kind of is something that you would not consider. And yet, as I've done my research and as I've looked at things, I find that there's a real sense of that energy that people can tap into through the quantum energy. And he has been able to do this in a very specific way. So thanks for joining us. At the end of the day, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. It's about what you've done with those accomplishments. It's about who you've lifted up, who you've made better. It's about what you've given back. Denzel Washington. Welcome to Inspire Vision. Our sole purpose is to elevate the lives of others and to inspire you to do the same. Tom Palladino, how are you doing? I'm great. Great to be here. Thank you, Doctor. Hey, you know, I'm I'm excited to have you on the show. This this is an area that I have not really discussed before on my show, and yet I'm finding that this concept of the quantum field and what energy exists there and how people are tapping into that is just absolutely fascinating. And I'm assuming that that how did you get started in this whole program, by the way, I'm, I'm really interested to know how you got started with the scalar, how you got investigating the quantum area of energy and power. Yeah, I, I've always been an avid reader. I've always had this curiosity. I've always wanted to learn. And I was willing to take the long way and the hard way to learn it the right way. So what am I getting at? I have a lot of work ethic and I have a lot of desire. And put that together and you can uh, you can make a career out of research. That's true. That's true. So what is your background? Uh, my my this has been my avocation ever since I was a child. I read about Nikola Tesla. I always wanted to uh, explore his work and I wanted to follow up in his work. So when I wasn't working trying to support myself, I was always researching. I was either educating myself at, at the university level or I was um, trying to understand better understand this, what I call emerging science. In a nutshell, that's that's been my life for the past 30, 40 years. And and how many how many people are actually really involved in in this type of science and this type of treatment? Uh, are, are you the main one or are there others? There are there are others. We're all, I would say we're all uh, distinct. Why we have a unique approach? I use instruments that are unique. So I really I don't want to compare myself to anybody because the, the comparison is not valid. But sadly, it's it's not been explored and, and identified to the point that it should be. This is an energy field, and this energy offers great promise to mankind. So we need a greater number of researchers and a greater number of practitioners. Well, and, and as we talk about, let's explain to the audience, if you don't mind, what is this concept of quantum power, quantum, whatever you want to call it, and you can name it the way you want to name it. And and how does, you know, I'm, I'm just fascinated by what that is because you, you hear it from a few different people, but uh, I'm not sure that people really understand what you're talking about there about a quantum power yeah it's so simple there's two energies you have electricity magnetism electromagnetic energy and there's another energy quantum energy what we call uh, in a familiar sense scalar energy so it's that simple there are two force fields there are two energies in the universe my druthers are to work with scalar energy it offers greater prospect than that of electricity 
It's that simple. Okay, so so that's fine. But what is quantum energy? Yeah. In, in your opinion, what is that? I believe How can it, people understand it. Yeah, I believe it's it, it originates from the sun and the stars. So if you look at the sun, you ask yourself, how does the sun have so much power, so much light? I believe it's scalar energy because scalar energy never experiences entropy. It does not die. The ultimate source, I believe, is God. Many people consider this the God force or the life force. In other words, how can you power stars? Well, I'm saying it's God who's giving power to the stars. So that's what we're tapping into. This is another dimension. Once again, I believe it's divine in character. And I believe this is the energy that really is the main animating force, the animating force of the universe. And and with a scalar now, did you develop your actual instrument that yes, you're using? Yes. I, I did, but yes. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I I copied an American inventor. His name is Galen Hieronymus. I was able to meet his wife. And I was able back in the 90s to purchase scalar energy instruments while his wife, Sarah Hieronymus, was still alive. So the Hieronymus family opened their laboratory to me and allowed me to purchase scalar energy instruments. And I was just awestruck with what, what this inventor, Galen Hieronymus, had discovered. And I was, again, allowed, I was, I was given this portal to his laboratory. Well, and, and I was noticing on your website that, that you talk about different diseases and how people have been healed by this quantum energy, which is done in your, at least in your process through, through the light, um, yes. through the scalar light. How, how, did, how does it affect that? And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I come from a medical background, okay? okay? So as I was looking at all the different pictures and you've got this bacteria and that virus and so on and so forth, how does that light mm -hmm. affect certain ones that are not healthy and mm -hmm. leave alone certain cells that yes. are healthy? That's very good. So how do I program this instrument? I actually take photographs of a microbe and I place it inside the instrument. This is the herpes virus. If uh -huh. I took this magnified photograph of herpes and place it inside the instrument, the instrument would look for the herpes virus, seek it out and break it apart, break down the molecular bonds of herpes. So I identify the microbes through a photograph. Why a photograph? It's a source of light. It has information on it. So the photograph of the microbe allows me to disassemble, to eradicate the microbe. Okay, so you actually need some type of medical diagnosis for what an individual is going through so that you can go in and decide which virus or bacteria or whatever it is you're gonna take a picture of so that that can be the focus, is that correct? That, that, that could be one approach, but I, I make it much simpler because I've standardized this. So what am I getting at? I have over 400,000 photographs of different microbes, different species of bacteria, viruses, protozoan, et cetera. And I'm able to program the instrument to look for 400,000 species of microbes, identify them and, and destroy potentially what, a, what is there, what is present at that present moment. Okay, and, and then how do you do that? Do you meet the people in person? Uh, yeah. how, how does an individual experience that? Yeah, so this, this is the, uh, the, if you will, the, the, the kit and caboodle here. When I work with a scalar energy force field, it's, it's non-local, meaning I could work at a distance. How do I work with people? By way of an emailed photograph. People will email me their photograph. I actually place a photograph inside the instrument. So it's not per se a, a, a biological process, it's an informational process. So the instrument will look at a person's photograph, will identify that person, will send energy to them, to their quantum field in specific. And in so doing, I can send instructions into that quantum field. It's all informational. I can send information into that dimension, seeking out the herpes virus and destroying it. Scientific background on this, and and I know that this is very very new. But do you have any type of um, scientific either studies or lab results, uh, um, you know, blood results that show the before and the after once they've gone through this type of treatment? Yes, I do. M many, 
<clears throat> now, I want to make this very clear. <clears throat> My work is not of the electromagnetic spectrum. So consider the electromagnetic spectrum in orange, and I'm working with the apple, which is scalar energy. So there is no scientific protocol to prove or disprove what I'm doing. It's a new science. However, we can look at the results. And that's, that's what is, I'm so keen on, is the testimonies, the results. In other words, people who come to me and they say, Tom, I have herpes. Well, I tell them, send me your photograph, email your photograph. I'll have the instrument look for that herpes virus. And lo and behold, it will negate the molecular bonds of the herpes virus. After my sessions, I leave it up to the people if they want to have a follow-up PCR test. Some of them do. Every follow-up PCR test has been non-detectable, no detectable viral load or herpes. Now, I cannot explain that by way of Newtonian physics because this is not Newtonian physics. It's a new science, and I can theorize that a scalar energy force field Specifically, the herpes virus was disrupted and we broke down that force field. We shattered the herpes virus. Okay, so you've got the herpes. What are some of the other health issues that you have found just through your own work that you've been able to help? And do you mind sharing a couple of stories about that? Sure. Here's an incredible story. We are working with an HIV AIDS clinic in Delhi, India. We have received over 5,000 photographs of people from this clinic. Most of them have HIV. After we've worked with these people by way of their photograph, their quantum field, some of those people have followed up PCR tests. All of those PCR tests show non-detectable, no detectable viral load for HIV. The clinic is called Om Prakash. It's out of Delhi, India. And right now, as we speak, 5,000 people have gone through our program. They all say that they feel better. And many of them can, can vouch for that to the extent of a follow-up PCR test. Explain what a PCR test is to the audience. It's, it's a test used as a in molecular biology looking for some type of a genetic material of the HIV virus or, or any type of virus, if you will. And if you cannot find any... any uh, any marker or, or, or any presence of that genetic material, it's considered to be undetectable. You, you never say the word cured or, or a, a complete remedy in, in, if you will, Newtonian physics and Western medicine. So I simply follow that rule of thumb and by saying, in my work, I see that the HIV virus is non-detectable. It cannot be detected by a PCR test after the scalar energy sessions. Okay, and the fact that it's non-detectable obviously means they're not experiencing the symptoms or anything else. And you've Correct. talked a lot about HIV. Um, what are, what are some of the other areas? Um, because you know, here in the U.S., I don't see that we have that type of epidemic. For instance, COVID. Have you have you had any results with people who are experiencing COVID? But and especially the, long, especially the long-term effects. I was talking to someone yesterday and they got COVID eh, maybe six, eight, nine months ago and they still don't have their taste. Uh, mm -hmm. They still don't have their smell. Have you found that you're able to help some of these long-term situations or what's been your experience with COVID? Yeah, as far as the long-term consequences, symptoms, I can't abate that because once tissue has been damaged, I cannot regenerate tissue. But I'll speak about the, the pandemic itself. I treated myself and I treated family and friends through their photograph. And no family member uh, was sick with, with COVID-19 during the pandemic. I wasn't. Um, I, I did not take extra precautions. I, I knew that I was covered by scalar energy. So my point is, from this new virus, COVID-19 is a new virus, none of my friends and family were sick during the two years of the pandemic. And and you mentioned something that it does not heal damaged tissue. Right. Is is that your assumption? Is that if the tissue has been damaged, that's really not going to help? That, that's correct. I cannot restore tissue. I cannot restore muscle. So it's it's uh, this is going to be a problem, an ongoing problem with the COVID nineteen uh, epidemic. Well, and, and for other things too, um, cancer. 
Uh, what, what's your, been ex your experience with cancer? I, I don't have the answer to that. It's going to be a different approach. In order to break apart a, a virus or a bacterium, it's rather straightforward. In order to, to remedy or cure cancer, call it what you will, I have to refashion, I have to reprogram a cellular structure. I have to reprogram the mutation. What is cancer? It's an, it's an addition, deletion, or substitution of a base pair. For me to do that, I'd have to get into the DNA, and I cannot yet correct DNA. Okay, interesting. So with some of your testimonials, though, they weren't all about HIV. They weren't all about those type of situations. There was someone, lady, that I think that was having problems with her foot or a, a gentleman that was. So that has nothing to do with those type of diseases. What, what were some of those experiences that they were sharing that was on your website? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people come to me and they, they say they, they complain of neuropathy or, or a bacterial infection or, or some type of arthritis. Well, yes, we can eradicate, uh, we can break down the, the quantum bonds, the molecular bonds of bacteria. Now, how does that translate into human health? Well, this is conjecture, but some people who have inflammation, say, in their hands, it's because of a bacterial buildup. And that causes inflammation, that causes a loss of dexterity, et cetera. So many people, by going through this pathogenic cleanse, were able to identify and eradicate pathogens. They report that their health um, has returned or their health has improved. Well, for various reasons. Again, some people have inflammation because of pathogenic infection. Some people, um, um, let, let's just say this uh, pathogenic infection makes them sluggish or create some type of brain fog. So it's it's multifaceted our approach in the sense that by going after a germ, a microbe, we see benefits, um, if you will, a broad scale approach to the, this um, scalar energy pathogenic cleanse. And many, many people experience various types of improvement in their health. Okay, and when we get back to the whole energy, the scalar energy, the quantum energy, um, how do you discuss that with people who are, and you obviously are also, who are deeply have faith in a higher power? And, you know, oftentimes they have experienced through prayer, through other things, some healing effects. Um, how do you explain to them what's going on and help them to maintain the faith that they have that those things can occur? Um, mm -hmm. And yet you're talking about a whole different realm of quantum energy that uh, kind of steps outside of that religious view. Thank you. I don't see any division between faith and science. I mean that. And what am I getting at? Well, <clears throat> faith is one way of looking at reality, and so is science. And if they both report the truth, well, God is the truth. So what is my point? You either can take a scientific viewpoint and find the truth through science, through, through inquiries, through, through the scientific process, or by faith, without relying upon human reason, and you simply can believe. But I'll be the first to say this scalar energy, this scalar light, it's non-physical. It's everywhere. It's omnipresent. I believe it's God's light. So you believe that it's actually his his power, his his whole thing that you're tapping into yes. that helps to heal those issues. Yeah. I've never considered myself a healer. I consider myself a researcher. And if people will ask me, Tom, will you heal? Will you cure? I said, I can't. God will. So I'm working with God's light and God's light will heal. I simply apply it through an instrument. So you've got Ebola, you got herpes, you got hepatitis, you've got Lyme disease, you got tuberculosis, malaria, all of those types of things. You have you been able to see uh, long term positive effects on those different types of diseases by the yeah. use of the Skylar? Yes, on all those aforementioned conditions. Yes, I'll go on record by saying the scalar energy instrument can look at a person's photograph and and pinpoint all of those causative agents in their quantum field and eradicate, break down the molecular bonds. Yes. So here's the question. If someone is doubtful, mm -hmm. but still willing to try it, mm -hmm. 
is is there an aspect of an individual's attitude that affects the results or is and and the next question i'll ask is from a percentage standpoint what percentage are you finding of people that actually are experiencing positive healing effects versus those that do not and what's the difference okay well since we're working with energy which is fundamental and this energy obeys the laws of science then when I'm working with the laws of science, I can guarantee that I can pinpoint a microbe and break down its molecular bonds, or what I call the scalar energy intelligence that holds together a microbe. So it's a, if you will, a fail-safe approach. Um, as far as people experiencing benefit, I would say everybody benefits. Their attitude will help in the recovery. Um, um, can I assure that everybody feels better? No. Because so many people have, have uh, various ailments, various medical conditions. I, I don't claim that I can, uh, if you will, address every medical ailment. I've, I've read where there's 40,000 chronicled medical conditions. Uh, obviously, only God can cure 40,000 medical conditions. But I would say, to answer your question, most, the, the greater majority of people who go through a session feel better. Okay. And so you have no way to really measure this. I know that there are those out there that measure the brain waves and those types of things to see if they can get them into a more comfortable position and so forth. That's have you ever measured brain waves to see before and after the treatment what yeah. uh, what results may be being affected by that? Because as you know, that's right. really important. Yes, to answer your question, no. Do I think it's possible? Yes. I would ask that a, a third party, some type of scientific group steps forward and collaborates with me. I'm trying to get my work out there. And yes, I would be open to such an experiment. And how long have you been doing this? Well, I'm 62 years of age. So I started reading about Tesla when I was eight, nine years of age. So it's been a 50 year journey, doctor. Okay, how long have you actually been offering this service to people? Yeah, I, I started working with Scalar Energy Instruments in 1993, and I would work with my friends for, say, the first 10 years to, to experiment and to really understand its application. My website has been up now for 12 years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you've obviously had some incredible responses to what you're doing. That's correct. Yes, sir. So do you find that there's other suggestions that you can give to people? to help them with their health besides just sending you a picture and then you using the scaler? Are there, are there other things that you recommend to them as an adjunct to yes. the scalar therapy? And which is everything that's safe and effective. So what am I getting at? If scalar energy is from the sun and the stars, everybody's receiving a scalar energy session every day, which is natural sunlight, natural starlight. So what is my point? This energy is not contraindicated. If this energy does not conflict with drugs, surgery, massage, potions, ointments. It's sunlight, it's starlight. So I never dissuade anybody from pursuing other health modalities. You have to. Now, I, I don't have all the tools in the shed. So yes, by all means, I encourage people to continue on with their health regimen. So what comes to my mind is, as you're talking about the energy of the sun and stars and so forth, what is the difference between what you're doing with the scalar instrument and me going out and sitting in the sun? It, it's identical. However, the difference is my instrument can pinpoint the problem, whereas the sun is just is, is, is not pinpointing, per se, a pathogenic infection. The sun is not, per se, that concentrated energy that would balance your chakras. I've, I've experienced that. That's another a protocol that I've perfected. The scalar energy instrument can balance the brainwave, can balance the chakras. Can I prove that? Well, not on paper, but people tell me that they have this sense of calm, this sense of tranquility. So can you also receive this a sense of uh, calm and tranquility by sitting in the sun? Of course. You know, and, and I find it interesting, uh, Tom, it's, you know, you get into the actual medical arena and, and it's just the pills and, you know, the diagnosis and take this pill and take that pill and so on and so forth. 
And, uh, you know, I heard someone talking about that one time, and, and it's so true, you know, this is going to cure this problem. Now, there's a few side effects. Could affect your heart, could affect your liver, could affect this, 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 this. But, you know, if you need a pill for that, take that. And then if you take that pill, then it's going to affect it in other ways. Very good. How, how do you find, and yet I think that what I find is that a lot of people don't really have an understanding or even a, a slight concept of the healing power of that quantum energy. And in your mm -hmm. case, you're using your your particular machine to to do that. How how do you help people to start to get a sense of what that quantum energy really is? Because I think that having a sense of that and an understanding of that could open up a whole arena of people experiencing better health and better attitudes and all of those types of things. Yeah, I, I agree. So let's go back to my point. If this is energy from the sun and the stars, that is the main intelligence. That's the primary motivating force in the universe, responsible for everything, including sound health. Now, what do I like about sunlight and starlight? There's no allergies. It's painless. It, it always is effective because it's fundamental. It's not contraindicated. And by, by taking a scalar energy session of sunlight, starlight, it's not going to advert, it's not going to produce any negative consequence. So this is the beauty. And I, to be quite frank, if this, this type of modality harmed people, I would have abandoned this years ago. There is no harm. It's pure intelligence. It's pure light. Okay, so here, here's an interesting question to, for me. What is the difference between the Schuyler focus and those that meditate that are able to change, you know, change the brain waves and the whole neural aspect of their brain to where they're also experiencing healing and, and those types of things? What would you say the difference is? There is none. It's identical, which has led me to conclude that thinking is driven the animating force behind thinking is scalar energy. Our, our thoughts and our emotions are scalar energy emanations or scalar energy notions. So when you use your scalar, uh, your device, that goes in and affects that. Yes, exactly. And you now understand this holistic approach. When I work with the scalar energy instrument, it works from head to toe and unbeknownst to me, it's it's quite profound. The permutations I could never fathom, but God's energy will correct the soul, the mind, the body. So when you're working with someone, how long is the procedure? Obviously, you have a picture. So do they need to be around? Uh, no. Is there communication that's going on or do they just send you a picture and hope to start feel better? Yeah, that's it. The people send me a photograph. Um, it's automatically uploaded. We have computer uploaders. Sometimes I receive a collage like this, doctor. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, the protocol is one hour a day, I cleanse the quantum field with pathogens. I, I remove microbes, viruses, bacteria. The second hour, I balance the chakras or the brain waves. And the remaining 22 hours of a day, I can assemble, I can create transmute minerals, vitamins, micronutrients. So it's a 24 hour session. We call it the standardized session. Wow. And do you have to be around all the time or is it just programmed into no. your machine? It's, pro it's programmed into the machine. The machine, the instrument works 24 hours. I have a number of instruments. They work 24 hours a day, whether I'm awake or I'm sleeping. So this is the key point. Under my care, I'm working 24 hours a day. While people sleep, they're receiving the, the nutrition that they need. Okay. And and I get that because I've talked to different energy healers and so forth that have been able to do it long distance. And, and believe me, I believe in that. I've experienced it myself. So basically what you're saying is you and obviously you have an, I was going to ask you whether you have a number of instruments but you're able to actually set it up you can go to sleep they can go to sleep and 24 hours later potentially they're going to start experiencing something so the, do they experience it to the immediately to where they go wow 
I know this is working or does it take it over a bit of time to where they may or may not identify it as something that you've done with the instrument? Usually within two or three days, people can tell something's working. Usually in a few days, people feel better. Okay. So what would be your message to the people that are listening to the show? You know, I'm following in the footsteps of a great scientist, Nikola Tesla, who's the first one to discover scale energy, and a few other inventors, Hieronymus that I studied under, and Moray, and Kozarev. Long story short, this is valid. There is another dimension, the quantum dimension. Tesla called it radiant energy. And everything what, that we've been able to accomplish with electricity will be able to be accomplished with scalar energy at a fraction of the cost, pennies on the dollar. It is safer and scalar energy is from the sun and the stars. It's an infinite source of energy. So in and of itself, scalar energy offers mankind the answer to the energy crisis. So how do you access the sun and the starlight into your machine? Uh, that's the key. We we can actually um, we can actually uh, work two ways with this. We can take an electrical current, which is what I'm doing now, and convert that AC current into scalar energy. Or some researchers have been able to affix a, a an antenna on top of the roof and capture scalar energy and just convert it, if you will, um, into usable scalar energy. So what what am I getting? There's two ways of doing this: convert AC electricity into scalar or to capture it just from the atmosphere and then to direct that into a scalar energy function. Okay, and, and science has shown how you can take electricity and mm -hmm. convert it into scalar energy? Yeah. Yes, so there, there are some studies of that? Yes, there are. There, there are there's a bi-directional relationship. You can take electricity and convert it into scalar and vice versa. Scalar can be degraded, downgraded into electricity. My predecessor, Hieronymus, did that all the time. Hieronymus was an electrical engineer, and he was able to take an electrical current and then change the geometry of that current into a, a double helix, and it became a scalar wave. Interesting. And, and, you know, as we think about a bunch of people that have all of these things on their roofs that are taking in the sun and converting it to electricity, what you're saying is you can just do the reverse. Yes. Exactly. Very good. Yes, it's a good analogy. Fascinating. So how do how do people access what is your website and how do people access your service? Yeah, it, the website is scalarlight.com, S-C-A-L-A-R, Scalar Light. We offer everybody in the world 15 days of free sessions. Anybody in the world can can upload their photograph. I want to prove this to as many people as possible. If I have to treat half a billion people by way of their photograph, I'll do so. Okay, and, and that is S-C-A-L-A-R. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And again, the website, Scalar. Scalar Light, S-C-A-L-A-R-L-I-G-H-T, scalarlight.com. Dot com. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Tom, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that people just kind of catch on to a purpose within their lives and then really spend an inordinate amount of time really focusing on that with the idea of really trying to help people yeah. and to lift their lives, whether it's health, emotions, or whatever that happens to be. And, and that brings up an interesting question. Have you found, and, and this goes into an entirely different area, have you found where people tend to be stuck in certain emotions that your your scalar energy can actually help that also, or is it just really mainly focused on viruses and bacteria? I, I would say this energy is all encompassing. I, I only understand a fraction, of it, so to speak, doctor. So what am I getting at? <clears throat> I believe perhaps the most promising aspect of my work is the chakra balance at which we can change a person's disposition. We can change their mental outlook. So it's it's an infinite possibility. Why? It carries infinite instructions. Interesting. And you're right. With the chakras being healed, do you find that that tends to heal the, the emotions? I, I really get into that because I've met so many people that are so stuck 
in anger or yeah. actually in victimhood or whatever that happens to be, have you found that by by working with the chakras through your scalar that you literally start to see them come out of that yeah. type of emotional profile to where innately they just start to experience that joy and that happiness and yes. contentment? Exactly. It's a it's it's a if you will a, a mental shift or a spiritual shift that we've seen in many people. Many people tell us that they're no longer depressed or they're they no longer have uh, the, these anxiety attacks. Others have told us that they're no longer addicted to recreational drugs. Now, obviously, I have not done that by way of a photograph. It's God's healing. Only God could heal somebody of a drug addiction. So there are some results that you never anticipated that you get reports That's right. on. That's right. Wow. That is amazing. That's well, listen, right. th this is phenomenal. And I hope folks that are listening today will really take a look at your website and kind of take a look at that and see whether there's something there that can really help them. And obviously, if you're offering 15 free days of treatment, there's really not that much that they can lose, is there? No. I say this and I'm not being quiet. The only thing you have to lose is your germs. Yep. Oh, that's great. Well, Tom, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And folks, <laughs> Take a look at this because I have found over my research for years, and this is the first time I've come up with this, but that I have a strong sense of that quantum energy and what it can do. And uh, it sounds like you have tapped in a way that is probably easier for some people to experience than others. Thank you, Doc. Well, thank you. And folks, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. And we look forward to having you join us again soon. Mm -hmm.